Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Songs of Psalms. We are at another day, another week. Um, this is a sad week for me and, and for our church family. We lost a dear sister. And so as I'm here today, I'm just reflecting on, um, on our dear friend and and so it's a little bit of a different kind of um, emotion that we're sensing here. But, you know, we we just trust in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. Uh, so welcome back to Songs of Psalms. We are on Psalm 91. We are on part five of Psalm 91. And I tell you, this psalm, it just keeps revealing more and more of the faithfulness of God and the truth of God. And so... Here I am, <laughs> MRJ, your Songs of Psalms host. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm the founder of Second Generation Music, and our mission here is to train skillful musicians, singers, and songwriters. We want you to be empowered to write the songs, to write the poems, to write the truths that reveal the, the heart of the Father. It's in moments like this when his word becomes alive and his word means something that we can depend on and so we want to go into psalm 91 because there is there are some biblical truths here that we need to pull out and help us stand on a firm foundation if we don't have a firm foundation when times of trouble come when when times of sorrow come it will it will crumble we will crumble so we are going to go into Psalm 91 again today. We are, again, as I said, we are on part five. And um, the last time we were together, we left off on verse three. And you could go and you can watch that on our YouTube channel, Second Generation Music YouTube channel to listen to parts one, two, and three. And um, today we're going to go into verse four. And we're going to talk about verse four because... There's some really good truths in verse four. Alrighty, um, so I pray that you're doing well and I just welcome the presence of the Lord in this place. Um, Elohim, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, verse four says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. Under his wings, you will find refuge. And um, his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. In other words, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter. He will shelter you with his wings and his faithful promises are your armor and your protection. And I believe that the psalmist used this beautiful analogy of protection. You know, it almost it almost sounds poetic and, and very flowy, right? It's only a, po a, a, a poet would use these types of words, these very um, beautiful words that, that are illustrative of God's protection. So what is God's protection right he could have he could have described him again as a fortress and a strong tower the way he did in um, in verse 2 where he said I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress right but here in verse 4 the 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 psalmist he changes what he says and he's and he says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge right a fortress and a strong tower would be something that is impenetrable right you can't get into it you can't get into a fortress or a strong tower easily but in this verse the psalmist i thought it was so interesting interesting how the psalmist used here the analogy of feathers and he hides you under his wings 
you know, <clears throat> in, in um, Psalm 91, it's not the only place where the, where the word of God references God's protection as feathers or wings, right? He is described in this way in other places. So let's look at a couple of other scriptures. In Ruth 2.12, the word of God says in Ruth 2.12, now this is not a psalm, this is in Ruth, the book of Ruth. It says, may the Lord repay your work and may you receive a rich reward from the Lord, the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have taken refuge. Under whose wings you have taken refuge refuge so there we have it in Ruth 2 12 where it's referred to God's protection as having wings now the, the Lord doesn't have wings right but there's a picture here that we need to understand about God's protection being like you're under his wings he must have pretty strong wing, wings for us to be able to find refuge and shelter there Psalm 17 8 it says, keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Keep me in, as the apple of your eye and hide me in the shadow of your wings. Psalm 36, 7, it says, how precious is your loving devotion, O God, that the children may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. The shadow of your wings. Again, there's this picture, a picture of protection being under the shadow of God's wings. Again, he doesn't have wings. It's not like he's a bird, right? But the, the psalmist in all of these scriptures were sharing a picture. They were they were causing us to understand that God's protection, it's like it's like you know. A wing that just covers you and hides you hides you from predators another one Psalm 61 4 it says I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings that's good right Psalm 57 1 have mercy on me my God for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Now that was David when he wrote that. He said, I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. Imagine hiding under the shadow of God's wings and there's a disaster happening. There's a storm happening. There's flying things happening and you can be secure under the shadow of his wings and let me let me i'm telling you all over the word of god i'm sure there's more but these are just a few that i found um even in the new testament look who talks about wings look who talks about wings jesus in matthew 23 37 he was he was sitting looking at at um, Jerusalem, right? And he was saddened. He was saddened because the people were rejecting him. He was he was their promised Messiah and they were rejecting him. And so he says in Matthew 23, 37, it says, how often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were unwilling so imagine Jesus is saying I wanted to gather you I wanted to bring you together the way a, a, a chick a, a hen gathers her chicks under her wings there's this protection there's this protection and I found it so fascinating that the psalmist referred to God's protection as being in the shadow under the shadow you can hide under the shadow of his wings it's intriguing it's intriguing it's a it's a symbol it's a symbol also of gentle and tender protection gentle and tender protection 
you know the way jesus described it it you you can see that picture you can see the picture of a hen gathering right they 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 use their little wings and they gather over the little chicks the little baby chicks and they're like come on come on let's hide let's hide let's let's be safe let's make you safe so think about a mama bird and how she protects her babies you know a mama bird sometimes what they do is they camouflage themselves in a tree or in a nest or or in the ground somewhere right sometimes they build nests high up in the trees and it's been said that there are even some um there, there's some birds that they camp really close to other like predators like an alligator right they will they, there might be a limb that's hanging over the water and uh and there's alligators there but the mama bird would put her nest there because she is wise and she knows that if she is close to the alligator other animals know that there's an alligator in the in that vicinity in those waters and so what they do is they camp there because they know that the, that the predators that are after them won't come near because there's an alligator there. Isn't that wise? Like, people study this and have noticed this behavior. Right? They'll camp close to alligator knowing that the other predators won't come near for fear of the alligator. A mama bird will completely cover her babies to keep predators away. And those mama birds will defend them at, to the point of where they may you know they they're not trying to let these predators come after their babies so they're going to defend and this is what the psalmist was saying he was painting a picture a realistic picture of the type of defense that the father gives this defensive uh protection where he's hiding you under the shadow of his wings he hides his own under the shadow of his wings, right? For a predator to get to a baby bird, he has to go through the mama first. He has to go to the mama bird. And, and this is a picture that the psalmist was given to us, right? That us as children of the most high God, for the enemy to get to us, the enemy has to go through him. The enemy has to go through him first, through the Father, before he can get to us. And this picture, this picture of wings, wings, right, is even found in the Ark of the Covenant. Right, when God told Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant, he told him that he wanted to, he wanted two angels, two large angels, facing each other. I wish I could just show you a picture of, of that, but I can't. <laughs> I don't know how to share my, I know how to share my screen, but you know, we're, we're just starting to go through that. But I would love to show you a picture of what the Ark of the Covenant looks like. You know, there's these two angels, the top of the covenant. Um, there's two angels with like their wings stretched out, extended to, towards one another. And the tips of the wings touch the tips of the wings of the other angel oh my gosh it is the most beautiful picture of protection and that is called the mercy seat that is called the mercy seat it is beautiful y'all it is beautiful sorry guys i was not getting my notifications but i am in god bless you debbie god bless you my sister abby my daddy yesterday was my daddy's birthday so if y'all can be so kind and just wish him a happy birthday just say happy birthday papo his name is papo rivera thank you guys um so it the wings the wings there's this protection these angels on the ark of the covenant they're like this and they're they're holding you know their wings out and there's this protection in Psalm 94, 91 verse 4, it says he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings will you find refuge. Under his wings you'll find refuge. So what is this psalm telling us? What is this verse telling us? It's telling us about the gentle and tender protection of our Father. 
right? We were saying a few episodes ago that, that this Psalm, Psalm 91, it is kind of like the Lord's resume. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie says, happy birthday, Papo. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday, Daddy. Um, right? That the, that the, um, that Psalm 91 is a picture of God's loving protection. This is what he offers to his precious people, right? When you write a resume, you're telling, you're telling a, an employer your qualifications, what you come, what you bring to the table, what you offer them, right? These are your skills, your qualities. This is what you do and who you are. And so to me, Psalm 91 is this very same thing. It is God's description of who he is. It is his resume. And Psalm 91 is letting us know the type of level of protection that is available to all. It's available to all, but not all receive it. Not all believers have access to it. And that may sound a little bit controversial, and it is. It is a little controversial because the promise of Psalm 91 is it, it's available to all, but not everybody wants it right because to have this kind of protection you have to be able to submit yourself to, to under his wings you have to submit yourself to be under his covering under his protection it means that you don't just go out there and defend yourself it means that you don't go out there and just fend for yourself those that fend for themselves get taken up they they get they get taken down by a predator Right, Psalm 91 is a promise for those that know how to live continually in the presence of the Almighty. Almighty. It's a high level protection, my friends. Let's look at Psalm 91, one again. Um, we talked about it a couple episodes again, but look at how the psalmist started. He said, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, not everybody knows how to go into his shelter. Not everybody knows that they have to be under, right? If the wings of the Lord is here, you have to know how to be here to get this kind of protection. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That's the promise. The shelter of the Most High is a special access place. It's a special access place. It's it's like when you watch a movie, right? Like you watch Rush Hour 2 or Rush Hour 3. That's the only movie that I can think of right now. But, you know, when they're coming in and they're looking for the villain or whatever, what are they doing, right? The villain is not out in the open. The, the mastermind of crime, he's not out in the open. Where is he? He is in the back room of a club, or he is in the back room of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> and we're not trying to target Chinese people. Don't get mad at me now. I'm just saying what I see in Rush Hour 2 or Rush Hour 3. But um, they're in the secret place. They're in the secret place. They're in that secret back room where it's very difficult to find them and to get to them, you know, there's like a guard upon guard upon guard. And you, you know, you gotta be a good fighter to get into that back room. Only certain people have access to the secret room. And it's the same with the father. If you want his ultimate protection, the ultimate protection that he offers, you have to know, you have to be a person of his presence. You have to know how to hide in him. You have to know how to be under him, submissive to him. That's what this psalm is saying. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. That means they can't find you. The enemy can't find you if you are in his presence. We're, we're saying, we're saying this, we're saying that in the presence of God, it is the safest place to be in the whole wide world. It's under the shadow of the Almighty, the most holy place where his presence dwells. 
And what does that protection look like? That protection looks like this. It could be a physical storm coming through a hurricane, like just the one that passed in, through Puerto Rico, right? There, people were under the shadow of the Almighty. His feathers were covering, his wings were covering. Why? Because people survived that storm. Maybe there was flooding, maybe there was, you know, things that, that trees that fell, but many, many, many people, I know from my family, and I know many of you who are watching your families were protected. Why? There was heavy winds, there was strong winds, there was heavy rain, but the protection of the Lord covered them. If you hide under the presence of the Lord, you can be protected for, from a financial collapse. You could be protected if there's a famine happening in the land. Um, you could be protected if you're, if you're hiding under him. You could be protected from persecution. And my friends, let me tell you, the days that are coming ahead, the days that are on its way, people are going to face unsurmountable things. Things that have been already prophesied, that have already been spoken, the things that are going to happen to the world, those things are coming, right? There's a lot of talk about the one world government and, you know, the control and all of that stuff, right? We, we, we're not, I'm not saying this to, to put fear or anything, but there are things that we know that are going to happen. The love of many will grow cold. There may be persecution. There may be lots of things that are coming our way. And where do we need to be? Where do we need to hide? We need to hide in the presence of the Lord. We need to be a people of his presence and know how to hide in his presence. When we are hiding in his presence, we are in the safest place that we could ever be. We have to know how to access the presence of the Father because it's there that we will find shelter in the secret place of the Most High. You know, it's, it's time, y'all. It is time for us to know how to live under the presence of the Father. It's time. It's time. It's time to stop playing games with the things of God. My friend, my, my, I'm, my sorry, my pastor, <laughs> he used to say that to us all the time. Like, it's, you know, stop playing games. Stop playing games, right? We can't have one foot here and one foot there. You're either in the presence or you're not. You're either in his covering or you're not. We don't have time to play church anymore. We don't have time to play games anymore. It's either we are people of God or we are not. If you say you love the Father, it's time to fully surrender to him and let go of whatever. Whatever needs to let go, you need to let go of, and it's time to let go, those things go. You will need to know his presence. You will need to know how to access his presence. You will need to know how to be submissive to him to have the protection from the things of this world that we're going to face. I know I need to go deeper. I, I sense it every time I open his word or every time I hear what's happening in the world, right? The time for being wishy-washy is over. It's over. It's the time for being wishy-washy is over. You either hot or you're cold. You cannot be lukewarm. Jesus said, I will spit you out. I will spit you out if you're lukewarm. That puts the fear of the Lord in my heart. <laughs> it sure does. Um, and the Father has given us time to, to get our act together, right? He is giving us time, but the time is, it's ticking. It's ticking. We need to be a people of his presence. That means we need to know his heart. We need to know his purposes. We need to walk in love. We need to forsake everything and live in such a way that others can see him through us. Know him through us. Give their hearts to him because we have been an example. An example of, of his love, of his faithfulness. So we want to thank God for his Holy Spirit, for teaching us through his word. And um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that because I'm on overtime. Thank you for watching. Um, be sure to follow us on Second Generation Music on Facebook, Second Gen Music on Instagram Live. 
Thank you, Debbie. Debbie writes, we need to be a people of his presence. Yes, I cannot stress that anymore. I cannot stress that anymore. There is an urgency. There is an urgency for us to be a people of his presence. We People of his presence look different than the so-called Christians who have their foot in the door, but their foot is on the outside they're gossipers they're liars they're fornicators there's you know you, either you serve god or you don't and there's an urgency in the spirit that we need to get ourselves together because when times come how are you going to get into his presence god is merciful the god you know mercy see he is merciful but there may be a time when that mercy can't be extended because you didn't make it in in time yeah Okay, follow us, follow us on secondgenmusic.com. We just launched um, a we our, our weekly blog, so go check that out. And um, yeah, come back with us tomorrow as we continue to dive in, all right? Let's learn more about what God wants us to do so we can just align ourselves correctly. All right, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you his perfect shalom. Ciao, ciao. Have a great day.